This is a lecture of financial management and the topic that we are discussing is stock valuation. Let's move forward to the contents. In previous lecture we discussed uh, what is fundamental analysis and what is technical analysis and then we developed our idea that the dividend discount model or the intrinsic value uh, comes under the domain of fundamental analysis. We developed the idea of dividend discount model, what dividend discount model is, um, and we, we derived a sort of formula of it. It isn't the final formula, but we, we have got an idea. In this lecture, we will discuss the types of uh, dividend discount model, and um, we would have a look at uh, two of its type, uh, the zero growth model and the Gordon growth model. So let's move forward. So basically we have three types of dividend discount model. The zero growth model, the constant growth model, which is also called Gordon growth model. This one is the mostly used uh, idea and sometimes uh, this one is used as a generic term for uh, dividend discount model. The third one is non-constant growth model. These dividend discount models were introduced by Gordon in 1956. So that's why it got its name as Gordon growth model. So you can uh, you have got an idea that um, these models are quite uh, um, introductory stages of from the introductory stages of finance. And uh, there are other uh, complex models, uh, but we have to develop the idea of the stock valuation and we start with the dividend discount model. So let's first look at um, zero growth model, what it is. So what is zero growth model? Um, the simplistic uh, idea is that when there is no growth in dividend, so there is zero growth in dividend. The dividend is equal for each year. And what uh, would that mean? From our previous example, say for the DG Khan Cement Company um, were to give a, say for example, a dividend of 10 rupees each year um, forever. I mean, or let's not say forever or let's, let's say for the foreseeable future. So that means that the dividend that is given today would be equal to the dividend that is given one year from now or two years from now or three years from now or four years from now. So, so it means that the amount of the dividend is fixed. Now let's go back to our understanding of time value of money. In time value of money we had annuity and then we had perpetuity. And what was annuity? When we had fixed cash flow for a finite time period. What was perpetuity? When we had um, fixed cash flow but for infinite time period. So in this case this dividend we, we have developed this idea in previous lecture that um, that stocks are uh, you know a per, uh, they are not not like bonds they are not going to mature uh, they do not have maturity time period and uh, they have um, they, they are a going concern so that means if we get a fixed uh, cash flow forever then that would be perpetuity so we, here we have a fixed cash flow for a infinite time period it is a perpetuity and what was the formula to find present value of perpetuity it was c divided by r and that's what we are using in this case so when there is a zero growth model it simply is an ordinary perpetuity and the formula that we would use to find the intrinsic value this p naught stands for the price of stock today zero stands for today at time zero 
so um, so 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 how do you find the intrinsic value of a stock that is the dividend divided by um, the 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 cost of capital or the required rate of return so in previous example the cost of uh, the required rate of return was 25 percent so we can calculate for that example that the current price should be 10 divided by 0.25 and the answer would be 40 what how do we interpret this value of 40 this 40 is the true value or the intrinsic value of this stock of dg khan cement company now why do we need to find this intrinsic value remember we need to make a decision whether to buy this stock or not to buy this stock say if in market this stock was being sold for 50 rupees would you buy it obviously not why because market value is greater than the intrinsic value market value is 50 and the intrinsic value is 40 and we know that when market value is greater than intrinsic value the stock is overvalued and when the stock is overvalued in the market we do not buy it comparatively if that stock was being sold in the market for 30 rupees we would want to buy it why because market value is less than intrinsic value so they, that stock is undervalued in the market so moving on to our next example this is a somewhat similar example but let's discuss it ppl which stands for pakistan petroleum limited has a policy of paying a rupees 5 dividend per share every year so they have a policy uh, that that policy is fixed uh, and the dividend is fixed for each year what is the intrinsic value of uh, pakistan petroleum limited share if the required return is 15 percent so uh, and using our formula from previous example we know that it would be the dividend divided by the required rate of return and the answer would be 33 so that means the true value of this ppl stock is 33 rupees if the current price in the market so current price in the market means it is the market value per share is 30 give your suggestion that either investor should sell it or buy it so we just discussed that the intrinsic value is 33 and in market that share is being sold for 30 so that means market value is less than intrinsic value that share is undervalued so when a share is undervalued we buy it so our decision should be to buy this stock okay let's develop our idea of constant growth model also called Gordon growth model so you have probably guessed it uh, this model should be used when there is a growth in dividend and that growth is constant in previous example when we we were studying zero growth model there was no growth in the dividend the dividend was fixed throughout the time period uh, for each year the dividend was fixed but in constant growth model there is a growth but that growth is fixed say for example we say that ppl would pay a uh, five um, uh, rupees dividend but that dividend would grow at 10 percent each year so then that would be an example of constant growth model and the the formula or the methodology to estimate its intrinsic value we would use the uh, constant growth model so uh, so in case of constant growth model if uh, d naught is 5 say using the similar uh, exam uh, you know value from the previous example then the d1 would be it would be 5 into 1 plus the growth rate which is 10 let me move towards the word document it would be probably easier to write it there so 
so what would be d1 equal to d1 would be equal to d0 into 1 plus g raised to power 1 so this would be the power so uh, from our example uh, it would be d1 would be equal to in previous example the d0 was the d0 is what the dividend that had been pre paid previously or today the dividend that had, had been paid, paid in past or today's dividend it was 5 and the growth rate we have assumed the growth rate of 10 percent so this would give us a value of 5.5 So that means the D1 should be equal to 555. What should be the D2 equal to? Yes, you have probably guessed it. It would be D0 into 1 plus G raised to power raised to power 2. So that would be 5 into 1 plus 0.1 raised to power 2. Or d2 can be equal to d1 into 1 plus g raised to power 1 you can try it yourself whether the answers are similar or not they would probably be similar so in previous example uh, this would be uh, 5 into 1 plus 0.1 raised to power 2 and this would be 5.5 because d1 is 5.5 into 1 plus 0.1 raised to power 1 they both would give you uh, this same answer so so the so what i wanted to tell you was how to find the d1 and d2 so we have understood the method of finding d1 and d2 and let's move forward to example abc company has paid a dividend of 1.5 per share this year so would this be d1 d2 or d0 remember when we say that it had been paid in past then it would be d0 so last dividend paid is d0 what will it dividend of abc in four years if its dividend growth at constant rate of five percent in this example they do not ask us to find the intrinsic value of the share they simply have asked us to find d4 right and what would be d4 equal to d4 should be equal to d0 into 1 plus g raised to power 4 so in this example the d0 was 1.5 and the rate was 5% so the formula should be 1.5 into 1 plus five percent to 0 0.05 raised to power 4 so we should have the the so the d4 should be equal to 1.82 this is d4 that means the dividend that would be paid after 4 year would be 1.82 remember in zero growth model d1 was equal to d2 and d2 was equal to d3 that means if the d0 was 1.5 rupees uh, in zero growth model the d4 would also be 1.5 rupees so there was no uh, need for this calculation in in zero growth model but in dividend growth model d1 would be different from d0 and d0 would be d1 would be d2 would be different from d3 and so on and so forth so we have understood how to find the uh, the value of uh, dividend so let's move forward uh, and uh, understand how to estimate the intrinsic value of uh, a dividend a stock whose whose dividend uh, have a constant growth so this is our formula 
if there is a constant growth then the intrinsic value of a stock would be equal to d naught into 1 plus g divided by r minus g this is the formula of growing perpetuity if you remember your uh, lectures of time value of money then you would uh, have uh, understood that this is similar to the idea of uh, growing perpetuity in growing perpetuity the formula was c divided by r minus g here we we can say that if if we if we convert this formula then d naught into 1 plus g would be equal to d1 and r minus g so it is uh, it looks similar to, to the uh, growing perpetuity formula so in next lecture we would try to solve an example on uh, constant growth model